Uh, I'm Lauren Riggs. I work with the U.S. Green Building Council in Washington, D.C., as does Mira. I work in the lead department on rating system development for green building standards, and Mira is in our research department. Um, our short talk today stems from last year's symposium, where a metrics group was formed around occupant behavior. So we're going to give a quick update on what that group has done over the last year, and then propose some next steps. So we'd really like your feedback any time during the next couple days on how we can move forward. Anthony and Chris could not be here today with us, but they put um, gave us some thought into how we should present the, our work today. So we had three goals that we were working from. Um, Mira and I unfortunately joined the group six months late. Um, so we were involved in the last couple goals and how we can achieve those. So we have achieved which metrics we want to collect. We're going to focus on energy and water. Um, and the next slide will go into specifically what metrics and units we want to use. And we've also been able to determine whether people know how to collect data. And we think people do know how to collect data. It's just this disconnect between the mechanisms out there to collect it and then how to implement it. Um, and because of that disconnect, we have not yet achieved our third goal, which is actually collecting and analyzing behavior, change on energy and water performance. I'm going to jump right into what the metrics were. <laughs> we're going to do um, energy, electricity, and natural gas per full-time employee and per square foot. Um, similarly with water, we'll measure gallons per full-time employee and per square foot. Um, some of the programs that are out there right now um, already collect these metrics, at least on an energy and water consumption basis. And one of the programs I work on at USGBC does do that. So it's going to be fairly easy for us to make the connection between a lot of the data consumption, resource consumption efforts out there and um, applying that to some of the behavior changes we hope to implement. So this is just for all the students? No. Actually, a lot of the thought we, the group gave before Mira and I joined was on residential. Um, so using some of the tools I've heard out there already, OPower, WeGoWise, EarthAid, all those folks, but what we need to do is figure out how to affect the occupant behavior. And there are a few tools out there. I spoke with one earlier in the week that uses Facebook as a, a challenge mechanism. And they don't only ask the person to say what behavior change they implemented that day or however often, but they can also measure it from, um, let's say, a sub a subsystem level or at the plug level. And so to verify that they actually did do what they're saying. So let's see, we just kind of went over that. <laughs> Uh, one of the issues that we wanted to discuss were the challenges with data collection. So I work on the Building Performance Partnership at USGBC, and I don't believe these challenges are unique to that program. Um, we, we find that if there's not a responsible or a dedicated party to collecting the data on an ongoing basis, that there are huge gaps when you receive your data. So you could have a really wonderful four months worth of utility data and energy. And then the next thing you know, you have a two or three month gap, and then they pick up again. And that gap is significant when we're trying to show trends, especially if we wanted to do a time-bound occupant experiment. We really need them to be very consistent. And we need that to be consistent with all of the buildings we're working with. So how do you host a competition if you have buildings with data that's just <laughs> so, it's so inconsistent that you have it for all buildings at some points? Some points you have it for three buildings, some points you have it for no buildings. So we want to really figure out a way to make it easy for that responsible party to collect their data. And that could be a technology fix, or that could be an education fix that we need to work with, with these folks. And also, I think there needs to be a connection with why they're doing it. Um, that's just another thing that we're finding is, is difficult. There's a huge education piece missing from why people should collect data and then also why it's important to correlate that to the human aspect. So I'm going to hand it over to Mira after I briefly say we're currently using Energy Star's Portfolio Manager as a monthly resource consumption tool at USGBC and EarthAid for our residential side. But we're looking into more frequent data collection methods. We want to make it real time, automated, make it simple, but then again, education on how to use those tools. 
Um, and some of the tools that we're thinking could be used for competition, I don't know, yesterday we heard a lot about how you know, people still thought that the economic motivators were the big thing, but then we're seeing that some healthy competition where you compare yourself, benchmark yourself against you know, your, your peers, your neighbors, um, can sometimes be very effective as well. So we've got a couple of technologies. One is um, Lesson, and is there someone here from Lesson? Okay, you're gonna talk this, this afternoon, okay. Um, but Lesson is uh, sort of a map, well, map-based display is one of the tools that Lesson offers that shows sort of a, a ranking of how your buildings are performing in terms of energy use. And you know, it's sort of a best to worst spectrum, and they're just indicated on the map. Um, and then GBIG is uh, the project that I manage um, at USGBC, and this is evolving into a couple of different apps. One, this one is a web-based uh, portal that you can access uh, projects by uh, the project profile page. And right now it's got summary information about lead projects in it, but we, this box that says, you know, lead status could easily be, you know, your energy star status or your, um, you know, if you're an ACU, PCC, signatory campus and your campus profile is up here, it can have your, your status um, as a signatory. But this allows, um, at least right now, it, it gives some summary credit achievement data, calls up your walk score, your transit score, be great if we could get energy star score in there. And then it has, um, this is just a screenshot, but it actually has the ability to compare you to a selected population and benchmark where your project falls along you know, various metrics. And we actually have calculated um, a carbon index for lead projects that is a, it's like a, a, a roll up of 29 different lead credits that have some impact on greenhouse gas emissions. And if you were to achieve every 29 of those credits, you'd have a carbon index score of 100. And so that's one way to sort of benchmark lead projects. Um, in terms of their carbon performance. And we hope to have other synthetic metrics like that too for other issues of concern. Um, so what's next for our working group? We are going to revisit, um, I think we've identified target behaviors for residential properties. We need to revisit those uh, to confirm that we've got um, the right list and then determine our target behaviors for commercial spaces. And this is for um, you know, engaging the occupants in behavior change. And then investigate measurement devices and new technologies. It's a pretty crowded market. I think we've seen even just in the, you know, the day we've been here talking a lot of different things that have been presented for capturing um, energy consumption at the plug load level. There's, you know, water metering. Um, so we need to see what devices are available and, um, and maybe do some pilot testing with that. Um, we actually saw something pretty cool uh, a couple weeks ago. It was a uh, it's called geofencing, where you can actually create a virtual perimeter in an interior space, and then by radio frequency, you can transmit information about uh, office machines and plug load, you know, energy consumption at the plug load, and then you can control it from your iPhone. So you can like turn stuff off and on, and you know, I think if you get some of that sort of, it's a toy type of technology in people's hands, like they're they're a lot more interested in um, participating. So um, our next steps at USGBC, um, Lauren and I have actually been given the go-ahead to conduct a behavior change intervention amongst our staff in our space. And um, we're, we would love, this is um, where we want to hear from all of you because we're not social scientists and um, we, we want this to be a successful pilot and we're thinking about you know, how, how long it should be, how many iterations it should go through. You know, we have a lead platinum commercial interior, so there's already a lot of um, passive strategies employed. So how do we get even more out of that space? Um, so that's what we're going to be up to over the next couple of months. And we would like your help because we want this to be um, a very successful pilot. So. One of the reasons we're posting the intervention in our space is to help achieve the third goal of the metrics group, which is get 
some data and analyze it. So it's natural for USGBC to take that on. I think it's also a good way to, for us to experiment with the best way to implement it and get employees engaged. Um, we want to achieve that third goal in under a year, and I think that with all of the people involved in the metrics group working on something that's very tangible, we can work out some of the kinks and figure out the best way to get people motivated. We were really excited about your sign, because even at USGBC, <laughs> Jason, we, we can't get people to recycle, so um, it's not awesome, and we want to change that. So I think humor is going to be one route. Yeah, he sings and people blush and they turn away and they don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so please talk to us about where we should start, how, what occupant behavior we should measure. We have a lot of great minds on this working group, but you know, the more input, I think at this point, the more we're going to be able to do. So. One of the challenges I know historically in the community is the end of the credits. A lot of developers or builders don't do it because it's cost-prohibitive. Uh, I know you guys made some tweaks to that for the 2009. Have you, have you guys have a policy on this working with city building code, big codes, to kind of make the MDB requirements kind of law? I think we just we just got that in Seattle this year with the new energy codes. We had, a, but there was a lot of owners at the table saying you need to you know meter plug loads and. Measurement and verification. MNV, measurement and verification. So getting the right, so if you want to get plug loads and light levels separated when you do MNV, so you really see a segmentation of all these different electrical and energy loads or water in your buildings, it's hard right now because it's pretty expensive. I think we tried to do it in a couple of buildings and it was like half a million dollars. So obviously our owners were like, nope, we can't do that. Um, but a lot of us were very proactive and were engaging our code officials when we went through our new upgraded energy codes. And we at, made sure that the codes mandated that you, you meter plug loads and meter all these different things. I'm not sure, I'm not sure it mimics what LEED has, but step in the right direction. I don't know if you yeah. guys have a policy on that's working on that. So, I mean, I, I was principally involved in the changes for the next version of LEED, so we're moving away from that. There's another acronym, IPMVP. It's a lovely MNV guideline that's confusing. So we're moving away from that and going really to measure your biggest energy or energy uses um, and I Lane might be able to speak better he is the policy arm um, and he's sitting right there and I have not talked to him about that so I don't know what he's doing no but the, the interaction between the code and lead is something that we're very conscious of and encouraging of mm -hmm. um, if you look at the green codes of note 189 and IGCC you'll see our logo on there for a reason uh, it's because that's where we have to get these technologies to have a completion of USGBC's mission, which is green building is no longer a niche. Yep. Cool. Hi. I'm just curious about the, the GBIG uh, database that you're creating and how much of the uh, information is outcome based, measured outcomes versus sort of projected or modeled off of the number of lead credits. I know, I know you are moving towards sort of measured outcomes post-construction measured outcomes. And, and I guess the second part of that question is sort of how much is, is do you anticipate that being populated by existing buildings? And, and um, it's sort of related to Jason's question that have, that have done sort of measured performance projects. Yeah, the plan right now is not really to use GBIG as a dashboard to view, you know, sort of real-time energy or water consumption from buildings, that's more Lauren's project, the Building Performance Partnership. But what we could do is, um, and, and also, I, I'm not sure how comfortable people would be with, you know, having that publicly accessible, like, and we could just go and see how your building is performing. Um, but what we could do, and what we're thinking about doing, is using that performance data in aggregate, and then if someone had um, a login to GBIG where you could see your portfolio of buildings or your project, and you would have access to that data, but nobody else would. You could then benchmark that against, you know, all of the other data that's in the port in, in the database, and you could see how you're doing against others. But it would be, you know, something that for your project or your portfolio, it wouldn't just be. I mean, we, we don't want to use this to like, you know, shame the bad performers or anything like that. You know, the idea is to reward leadership and exemplary performance, but not call anybody out. So does. Okay. 
Right, except to themselves. You would say like, wow. We have time for one more question. I'm sorry, a um, lot of questions, but they can grab you at lunch yes. and ask the question. Sorry, one last question. Um, yeah, I've just been thinking since yesterday about this conundrum of uh, some people kind of coming, coming here thinking about uh, behavior as a way to get more out of our buildings versus looking at buildings as a way to get more behavior, more sustainable behavior, and flipping it around a little bit. So within that kind of scope, I encourage you to think about not just what you can get out of energy savings in the building, but, you know, for example, for every occupant, you could get a ton to a ton and a half of GHG savings through dietary changes, mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's kind of a whole spectrum there. I'd love to talk to you guys about. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. We've um, looked into some, uh, we're doing an index on active design right now, and I don't know how many people in here are familiar with like those principles, but it's really a taking design of the building and using that to shape occupant behavior. So that like those really attractive stairs that we saw, um, you know, that's one strategy, but there are many like that. So we talk more about that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for the work you're doing. <laughs>